It's Tuesday the 16th of June. Welcome. We're continuing our thoughts about spiritual warfare and how Paul fought the good fight during his ministry. In this battlefield, Satan struggles for dominance. So what are our weapons of warfare that we can use? Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4, The weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but they are divine power to destroy strongholds. Paul says that our weapons are not physical, but they have power in the spiritual realm to pull down and destroy the, fences, the, the defences of the most fortified of military establishments. In other words, our spiritual weapons are the most powerful kind known in spiritual warfare. So let's take a look at what these weapons are over the next several days. Firstly, I want to say that the gospel, the gospel message, is part of uh, our spiritual weaponry. Satan did everything possible to prevent Paul from preaching the gospel. Why is that? Because the gospel has power to change lives. In Romans 1 verse 16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First the Jew, then the Gentiles. Yes, the gospel, when it touches our lives, has power to free us from Satan's hold, to free us from habits that are destructive, and to give us uh, God's power flowing through us. In Hebrews 4 and verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Jesus told his, his followers, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So the first building block of setting people free is a foundation of truth. And that takes communicating the gospel to people. Romans 10.14 How then can they call on the one who they, they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Saving faith comes built on truth. Uh, Paul writes, faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of Christ. Declaring the good news, the sword of the, of the spirit, the word of God. This is Paul's analogy when he talks about putting on the full armour of God. Preaching or declaring the good news of Jesus is a vital weapon in the arsenal of the kingdom of God. Our personal witness to what Jesus has done for us is a form of declaring that good news. Satan will try to prevent us from declaring this good news because he, he's, he doesn't want us to open our mouth and he doesn't want people to be set free. But do it anyway, relying on the Spirit of God. Don't sheathe one of your most powerful weapons because your enemy tells you to. The Gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. Let's declare it and say it to all who will listen. And even those who won't, let them hear anyway. Father, we do thank you for the good news of the Gospel that brings us forgiveness and freedom. And I pray, Father, that you would help us to speak out the gospel to people and bring freedom to this world so that it might leave Satan's clutches and uh, know the freedom of Jesus in our lives. We pray it in his name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you can do so again tomorrow. Until then, bye for now.